Hi, we're out on the range today, so please bear with gunfire you hear in the background. Now, a couple of viewers asked me to do a presentation on knives, so here we are. Well, knives are a complex subject that you could go on for weeks about, but I'm hopefully going to condense that to just a few minutes. Mainly for two reasons. One, I don't want to bore you, so I'm just going to hit what I consider to be the high points. And two, it's only going to take a few minutes to cover pretty much everything I know about knives. First, let me show you something interesting. These are my two primary throwing knives. Now when it comes to throwing knives, there's two main things I gotta tell you. First is I'm not your average schnoid. I've actually won quite a few competitions for tomahawk and knife throwing. But for as much success as I've had in doing it, I've had that much failure in trying to teach other people how to do it. If you wanna learn to shoot safely, effectively, with discretion, magazine changes, shooting on the run, tactics, I'm your man, I can teach you those kind of things. But knife throwing, although I'm fairly good at it, Teaching it is a skill I just don't have. The second thing is, knife throwing, although it looks cool in westerns or old war movies, it's really for the most part just a parlor trick. It has very little practical application. Let me see if I can show you some things about knives that are practical. Okay, kind of cool, but like I said, let's look at something practical. Now when it comes to knives, the one you're going to have with you that you're going to use most often is a pocket knife. Thousands of different types out there. This Barlow knife is probably something like what your grandpa had. It's just a knife blade and then a smaller knife blade. And that's it. Not bad at all. And there's many versions of that. There's no question that my favorite knife, as far as pocket knives go, is the Swiss Army knife. Lots of knockoffs, but only two that are considered to be official Swiss Army knives. One is the Wenger, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. And the other one, even more so, is the Victorinox. Now here's a pretty typical Victorinox Swiss Army knife. Many configurations, but this one's pretty typical. It's got a blade, and this one's a lock blade. And it's got a combination bottle opener screwdriver and a combination can opener smaller screwdriver. And on the back, it's got this leather punch and a corkscrew. It's a European knife, they drink a lot of wine. It also has a toothpick and some small tweezers, which really come in handy. Now, the thing of this kind of knife is, you got to have enough gear on it to do the job that you need it to do, but not so much that it becomes brobdingnagian and you never carry it. Now, a long time ago, I had a colleague that had a version of this that I think had 16 blades, and it was nearly triple the thickness of this one. And the most common thing that he said in reference to a knife was, quote, Hey, Paul, can I use your knife? Because... His was too impractical to carry in his pocket, and he never had it with him. Now, on the other side of that, this is also a Victorinox Swiss Army knife. And it's got a knife blade, and on the back, a combination bottle opener screwdriver, and also has a nail file. A nail file? It was designed by a sexist man to be carried by a woman, so he figured they needed a nail file. Well, when I show little knives like this, I get asked, what are you going to do with that? What you're going to do with it is have it with you when you left this one at home. And because this one, like most of these, has a ring to attach it to a lanyard or your key ring, there's a lot of people that attach this kind of knife to their key ring and they have it with them. Program compliance. I want to show you another type of pocket knife. Now this one has this clip so it can attach to your belt or your pocket. A lot of people will hook these on the inside of their pocket. Good for retention and it's easy to get it out of your pocket. It also has a nub that you can open the blade with one hand. Very practical. And it's a lock blade. And it has a nub on the back that you sweep this nub while you flip the knife and you can open it really quick and that looks cool. The problem with that is I had one of the troops when I was in the army had a knife like this and he wanted to open his MRE and he gets his knife out and he flips it and he cuts it open and wow he thought he was cool and 
He didn't realize that as I'm watching him do this, I'm thinking, you're too weak to open an MRE bag? <sighs> if at all possible, select your knife on quality and practicality, not cool factor. Now, that's pocket knives. What about a knife on your belt? Well, the same kind of things can apply. Practicality and program compliance. Now, when I go to Mountain Man Rendezvous, you know, you cook in the Dutch oven, camp in the teepee, shoot your muzzle-loading guns, this is the knife I have on my belt. Now, this one is a Bowie knife. I know that because it's stamped J. Bowie right on the blade. This is actually a K-bar knife, and it's very high quality. But like so many knives, it didn't have a sheath when I got it. And so I had a leather guy make up this sheath for me. And it's a very practical knife to have on my belt. Okay, well I went to one of these rendezvous and I took a guy with me and I loaned him a knife. A similar one to this, this one right here. Now this is quite a bit bigger, but still it's basically a Bowie knife. This was made in Pakistan and a lot of times these Pakistani knives get a rep for it being low quality. No, they're really bang for your buck, a pretty good knife. This, this is actually a high quality piece of equipment, but it comes with a really chintzy sheath. Well, anyway, I loan him this knife, and the next day he's trying to do some kind of task, and he asks, can I borrow your knife? Now, a different guy with the same question, can I borrow your knife? What happened to the one I loaned you? Well, that was just too uncomfortable to have on my belt. My bad, I should have followed my own advice. A knife like this that is not practical to carry, not comfortable to carry, ends up getting left in the tent and not on you when you need it. So what is a good knife to have on your belt? This one is made by Buck, and it is a very well-designed, high-quality knife. It's got a good handle, it's got a good hand guard. The taper of this blade allows you to skin large animals with it. It's also very high-quality steel and comes with a really good sheath. It's very well put together, and the retention system will keep that in there. You're not going to lose your knife. And it's got a loop big enough to fit on most belts. Downside, it costs about three or four times what a knife like this costs. But it's a good knife. Now what about survival knives? Well, here's a really typical one. Now a lot of these are a lot bigger, but this is small enough to be a little more practical. Again, really chintzy sheath. Also, a lot of these survival knives have a hollow handle. Now this is a compass. And they will come with survival gear in them. This one has four strike-on-box only matches and no striker. It has two fish hooks that are small enough that about the size to catch a sardine and six feet of fishing line. I hope it's a shallow pond. And this compass, well, it tells me that that's west. Oh wait, now that's west. It doesn't even work. So many of these knives are really chintzy and very low quality and a lot of times you will hear people say, well, even a cheap $1 knife is better than nothing. I don't know that this is better than nothing because it gives you the impression that you have a piece of gear when you really don't. But in talking about belt knives and hunting knives, let me show you another one. This, a combo kit, there's lots of similar ones, comes with a really good skinning and gutting knife. And this little hatchet, which is really more of a cleaver. This is really good for breaking bones and butchering animals, but it's not really good for chopping firewood or that kind of thing because the hatchet blade is tapered more like a knife, not like a hatchet blade. Very sharp and does a good job of what it's supposed to, which is butchering animals. Downside is that it comes with a really chintzy sheath. Although it keeps the hatchet secure, the knife falls out that doesn't keep that secure at all and the loop on the back is too small to fit on most belts. If you're one of those guys that carries a small pack while you're hunting, stick this in your pack, really good piece of gear. I only paid $20 for this at Weimar, really good piece of gear. And the big thing of all of this I'm trying to say is program compliance. This, because it won't really fit on a belt and your knife always falls out, if you try to put it on your belt, you're gonna discover that kinda sucks and you're gonna leave it at home. You got to get something that fits with what you're doing. So that pretty much covers what I want to say about knives. Bottom line it, you got to get one that has enough gear to do the job you want, but not so much that you don't have program compliance. 
Get the real Victorinox if you can, but if you can't, the knockoff is better than nothing. Select your knife on practicality, not on cool factor. Now this knife has a lot of cool factor, but you know it just really isn't practical. At this point, the question comes up, okay, what kind of knives do I have, do I use? Okay, let me show you. Now, if you've seen very many of my presentations, you've seen this string hanging out of my pocket. It's attached to my pocket knife, which is a Victorinox Swiss Army knife. And it's just enough smaller than this one that it fosters program compliance a little better. And it's got two blades, and then the combination bottle opener screwdriver, can opener smaller screwdriver, and of course the toothpick and tweezers. And for me, that is the best combination of gear to get the job done, small enough I'll have it in my pocket. A belt knife, the one that I use is this one right here. Now this was Air Force issue back in the 1980s, and someone who was in the Air Force in the 1980s gave this to me back in the 1980s, and it's been in my pack ever since. It's kind of like a K-bar, but smaller enough that it's a lot more practical. And the back part of the blade right here is sharpened. It also has the pommel of the knife is heavy enough that it can be used as a hammer if you need to. Now, you're not going to drive nails with it if you can help it, but it can be used in that fashion if you need it to. And it comes in this sheath, which is a really high quality sheath, has a sharpening stone, and the back of it is covered in metal that's riveted in place and that metal is folded around so you're not going to fray the sheath and have the knife come out of the bottom of it. This is a great knife. Maybe not for everybody, but it's what works for me. And of course you've already seen my two primary throwing knives that I use at the rendezvous. And that covers pretty much everything I'd ever want to say about knives. I would add to that perhaps check your local laws before you stick this three and a half inch bladed knife in your pocket because it might be too long to be carried concealed in the jurisdiction you live in. Always check your local laws. And the bottom line to the whole thing is, if you've sat there the whole time watching me do this and bearing with my speech impediment, I can't even say the word impediment, and my Shatner-esque pauses, thanks for your attention and thanks for watching the knife video.